Hello, I'm Dr. Trashology and we're going to talk about trash today. So the first question I've got for your, all of my audience is uh, what is trash? When you think of trash, think about what you're throwing into the trash can. Well, what I get to do is I get to think about what all of Johnson County throws into their trash can. So we have to, as the county, we have to plan for all of the trash that's generated in Johnson County. So we get to plan for about 550,000 people for the next 20 years. So my perspective is a little different than yours possibly. But trash in general is basically stuff that we're done with and we're discarding. And so it needs to be managed properly. So right now, most of it goes to the landfill. But I hope today to change your mind uh, and divert what's going to the landfill and send it to other places. And we'll discuss that here in a minute. But to start that, we want to know what's in our trash. One of the things that we asked ourselves when we started this venture was that we needed to know what the heck is going into the landfill. So we did a study of all the trash trucks going into the landfill and throughout this solid waste system in Johnson County. So one of the things I want you to think about that, it, it is everything from banana peels to um, anything and everything you put in your trash, but it's more. And a lot of people think that it's useless. Well, the, the wonderful thing about our project was that we looked in all those, all those trash trucks and we took out samples out of 800 trash trucks a day for one week in a fall. And then the following spring, we did the same thing. That's over 4,000 trash trucks every single week that we did our study. So what we did then is the samples we took out, we sorted them and we weighed them. And this is what we found out. That when we separated into all those categories, 42% of what was going into our landfill was paper products. Those are things like cardboard, um, newspapers, and paper sacks. Newspapers and, and paper sacks. Anything and everything that's made out of paper. So one of the next most things was food. There's about 1,500 uh, restaurants in Johnson County and about 250,000 residents, homes and things. So they produce a lot of food waste. Things like leftover waffles, apple cores, get it out of here, and also bananas. So all of this and all the restaurant waste and cafeteria waste all goes into the landfill unless it's being composted. So then we also have things like plastics, like plastic cups and plastic bottles that are going into the landfill that we found. And then the fourth most that we have was yard waste. So 11% by weight of what was going into our landfill was yard lace waste like leaves and grass. So well, we started looking at our pie chart here and we found out, you know what, things like the paper that we did, um, glass items like jars and, and pickle jars and tea jars and things like that, we're all going into the landfill. Also metal, like cans and soda cans, we're going into, we're going into the landfill. And when you add up all the things that could be recycled or managed differently than going into the landfill, we looked at all of these things and over 85% of the material going into the landfill could be managed in some other way. Okay, next. So this is a picture of part of the study that we did where you can see the people that are uh, sorted through the trash. And next. So what I'd like to propose to you today is that we manage our trash a little bit different. So here's the trash here, and most of you have heard of reduce, reuse, recycle. And I want to introduce to you a fourth option, a fourth R, called recover. Then we, if we can deal with our trash through reduction before it even hits the trash can, 
things that keep the trash out of the uh, solid waste management system, things like uh, uh, planning meals better uh, so that you don't have any waste or minimize your waste, those kinds of things are huge in actually limiting the amount of stuff that actually goes into the trash can. Whereas reuse are things like, uh, where you can use, reuse things like clothes, donating clothes, um, uh, durable tableware, durable plates, uh, things that you can clean over and over again uh, so that you don't even have to, uh, that, so that you can keep re reusing things. And the durable stuff is also uh, kind of a way to reduce. Then recycle is probably what you're most familiar with. Things like your plastics and stuff could be re used as a resource into another input system to manufacture things. Then there's a recover aspect. And those, when we manufacture items like your bottles and, and cups and things like that, the, there's energy embedded in this material. And if we can't use them any other way through recycling or reuse or reduction, we can actually get energy out of them and manufacture either more energy or some sort of gas or something to recover the energy out of them. What's left over is the stuff that, in my belief, needs to go to the landfill. And that is, that is uh, one piece of the puzzle. It's just not the whole picture. This is more of the picture of a modern solid waste management system where we we divide and conquer, um, and landfill is one place to put it, put everything in. Okay, go to the next one. Okay, so we're going to imagine to go into my bus here, and we're going to go to the landfill very quickly. Next slide. Okay, so this is an aerial photo of the Johnson County landfill. Um, in the blue areas um, are future landfill space. And then in the pinkish purple area, that's where we're currently landfilling uh, for the rest of 2014. Uh, this area right in here is going to be the next area that we're filling in. Uh, and the composting area where they're doing leaves and grass is down there in the yellow square. The blue areas should last us through the plan and, and our best calculations. Looks like th that space will last through 2043 at the landfill. Next one. So this is a, the current ground level. If you pass by the landfill, you know, typically wouldn't see much. Um, there's berms there to keep uh, the unsightly trash out of view of the public. Next slide. So when you first go into the landfill, they always weigh all the trucks so that they know exactly how much trash are going into the landfill and they, they know how much the trucks weigh. So through simple subtraction, they can find out exactly how much material is going into the landfill. So as we had said, um, 900, 800 trash trucks a day go through the gates of the Johnson County landfill. And this is a picture of kind of the parade up to what's called the working face, which is where they're actively depositing trash on a daily basis. It's always changing because they're covering over lifts of trash about five to 10 feet tall um, and compacting it to make it as efficient as possible and get packed into the landfill as much as possible so they can maximize how much refuse goes into the landfill itself. Excellent. So this is a picture of the working face, and it varies, but on average right now, uh, the Johnson County landfill from a region actually takes about 4,500 tons every day with an upper level of about 5,000 tons per day. And as you can see, it's a very active place. This is where the trash trucks, they dump all the, all the collections from the curbside. And then the compactors there that you see with the red and white, they, ha they weigh a lot and they run over the trash and compact it back down into the landfill. So I did a little calculation and over the course of last year, we generated about 1.3 million tons of trash at the Johnson County landfill. I also did a little calculation of the Empire State Building. We have enough trash that we can fill the, over, the Empire State Building and have some left over. So uh, we have a lot of trash and uh, it's, that helps you kind of conceive about how much trash we're dealing with on an annual basis. So this is a picture of a modern landfill design 
As you can see, um, it's, a, it's a hole in the ground, thus a landfill. And so we dig in the, this area about 250 feet below the ground. Then they have to, for a modern landfill, they have to seal it off from the environment. So there's, there's thick plastic that is put on the bottom of that hole. And then we stack trash on it and, and compact it in so that we can maximize the, that airspace. Also what happens is in the end, um, it has a cap over the top of it so that we insulate that from the environment and the environment from uh, the trash. So we also have monitoring systems so we make sure and part of my job is to go out to the landfill to make sure it's operating correctly and isn't impacting the environment. So we've been doing this since the mid 90s and we're still learning a lot about how to manage our trash in an in a environmentally responsible manner. Okay. Okay, we're good. Okay. One of the last things I'd like to kind of finalize uh, the importance of managing our trash correctly is we had an opportunity in, the, in that pink area uh, to go back when they were modernizing that part of the landfill. Uh, we actually dug up 1970s trash and we found a newspaper, this newspaper here in this slide, um, that was actually from March 18th, 1972. And as you can see in the headlines, most of you younger viewers won't be able to understand this, but it's from Vietnam, and it describes an airstrike during the Vietnam War. And so this newspaper has been in the landfill for 38 years, and now it's over that, because we did this in 2010. And so this picture shows you what happens to the paper if we just bury things and leave them in the ground and don't try and recycle them and things like that. Those resources are basically entombed and not available to us. Next slide. One of the other ones uh, that we get a lot of questions about is there's a perception that uh, a lot of leaves and grass and all the things that go in the landfill just dissolve away and disappear. Well, in that same area of the newspaper, and we know this because of the date on the newspaper, we found a bag of green grass that you can see in the yellow circle. It doesn't look like it just came off your lawn, but it's still recognizable as green grass from someone's lawn in the early 70s. This stuff doesn't dissolve very fast. There's a reason for that. There's hardly any oxygen in the bottom of the landfill. It's compacted, and so this stuff degrades very, very slowly. And so from my perspective, one of the better things to do is we can recycle that stuff and leaves and grass and paper through composting or through recycling and that chart that we had talked about earlier. As, as the last slide comes up, what I want to talk to you guys about is, just like we had talked about a little bit earlier, is about responsible resource management. Really like to, to uh, make sure that we protect our natural resources and, and just manage our trash a little bit differently than throwing everything into the landfill and waiting for the landfill to fill up. Thank you very much. Have a great day.